There's a book, another 50 girls. So we had 350 girls from Auschwitz. And uh, yeah, and I was looking out always the window. You know, I want to see, feel like the Freiheit, I wanted to see the free, the people. And then standing, he all sides standing, he says for me, you see, he says for me, the sky, all of you go with the, with the chimney out to the sky. I don't answer him nothing, I walked away from the window. And then when the Russian was already, he was always coming up in from Sakharim Gedreidert. And uh, the Russian front was already very close, so we worked in the night. And they put me to work, not, I was deep in the factory, I was working on two machines. Well, I was very fair, smart, and I said, right over there, show me, what they show me, I do, could, could do it. And so I was by, by so much, a little further, like here, mm -hmm. he came in, in the, late in the night. Who is he? The, the uh, Lagerführer. Mm. I don't know, he was named Foss, or Foss, Foss, something like this, I can't remember exactly. And he didn't come to me close, he just saw me. You look like you have fever. I got beautiful red cheeks. That's what Mengele asked me. Why I have such a red cheeks, you have fever. I said, no, that's my nature. This is my nature, doctor. Uh, he says, come on, you have fever. I'll take you back in there, you know, there, I don't know how you call it. The barakaran, you know, baby sleeping. Then I said, no, this is my, I said, this is my nature. No, this is not fever. So, I looked away, went away. He was too much after me, too much after me, too much after me. And what a, a saleswoman was there, very nice. Short lady Ilsa, her name was. And my friend Blanco and Ansi used to sew them a suit. They were suits, uh, ladders, but her parents, were, his father was, and they were working with his father. So they came and she, they took girls, uh, she wrote the material and she was uh, sewing for her a suit. Mm -hmm. for her. And that's also here Blanco, once in the top. He was another cousin for her and I was on the top. And they were separate, a pace. Well, how, like many how many bunks were there? Three bunks? Uh, oh, a lot. We had 350 girls, maybe one, one bank, one 300? mall. No, this was a factory, maybe. They had their cottons, you know, was there so yeah. about 100 girls we were there. And bunks, mm -hmm. you know, but four was together, and there was a space like this, and there's again four. What I wanted to say, you see, so you worked on two different machines, two machines, the same machine, sewing machine, you know, mm -hmm. material it was a big cat, I called them. Some the, 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 the cotton went up. Mm -hmm. The the twin, you know. Yeah. In the front, you had a overmat uh, with some handle, and you close it, and then it was say, sewing, it was a glove and the In the back, the material came out, and I worked on two machines. Some girls worked on yarn bone. I mostly I was to everything. If they needed me to put in the thread, the the the, the thread for the for the, the, the needle, the other needle. The sphere, you know? It's a thread. Nail, it's a thread, yeah. Yeah, to cut it. I don't know, the numbers went for four, three, five, you know. I had to count it. But the truth goes on, then it's all like a root, you know, to set it on a to. And do I have to count it? I like the thread goes, how the design goes. And questions was all the world, so. So yeah. what was your sister? Your sister was not in I Auschwitz? I was in Auschwitz together with, with uh, my younger sister, Miriam. Yeah. But they caught me in this, the, this for selection. Somebody came and says, an SS uh, officer, and I, I think so was a civilian too. And he picked me up to took us to the B-Lager from C. And there we were about 300 girls. 
And then we went to test. A civil man came in. And each one, the, the name, is a hero to the right. He's the one to see if we can write, if we understand in German, we speak. But then I got sick. And then when I first finished, they asked me where I belong. I said to the sea lager, but I want to go back to my two sisters. And when I came back, she was ever not there. So I don't know what happened with them. First, we had a big selection from the, I was in block 17. It was a big selection. My four friends, four, four sisters. So the two stayed alive and the younger one and the older one went to the guest chamber. Wow. They separate them there. And, and you know, they put them, if an oven was, or whatever was it. So we, all of them came here, and who doesn't like it, we send them here. Mm -hmm. And this, in the night, they came, the, the truck, uh, the station, uh, no station, a big truck, you know, truck or what you call it. And took them to the guest chambers. Then they took the two sisters for Bronco on sea. The younger one and the older one. Uh, I do not think, I can't tell you. So your sister went to another camp? That later on, I got no, what I'm going to when I came home, the Berele was home already. Mm -hmm. And he had already an apartment in the city, but we left the outskirts in the city. And I said, Berele, where is city? Where is uh, Maria? He says, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Then, uh, doesn't know, doesn't know. And I was there, I don't know, two or three, four weeks in my city. And we were sleeping, not in my house. My, I went to my, in the old house, we had a big garden with all kind of fruit. I cream on the, on the we have rooms like the long one, not like we have here. We call it bourbon sea. Very good food. I creamed on the tree, and I sit and I ate my, the house was empty, but better chase the people out. Really? We'll tell them out. There was people living there, but nothing was broken. They were in very good condition. So what happened to the house after you left? The Germans took it. Who took it? What do I know? You don't know. No, no. But when I became home, when the Erla came home, some people was living there. Mm -hmm. But he chased them out. And then I was, then I left. So I don't know. Then we went back uh, with Mike to see his brother. He came from another city. He couldn't. He couldn't go to the city where he was living. He came to the city where we were born. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I saw those two houses. Here, a long house. Here, and here, a long house, and a big place to go out to the street. So after, after I said, you know, the people, uh, the government must be sold for these people with the Goyim dot, our house. Very big house, was very big two houses. So what did you find about your sister? They took oh, her over. Then I came home, Yeah. the, the second time from, from Prague, when I was, when the, the Czech house of government asked documents, but they going to adopt. The people from Carpathian, they're going to adopt them. So they can stay, but they have to prove it, that they're born there. So I went, in one of my cousins, my father's cousin from, from Munkach, from another city, very in Ungvar, in Zeppelin Unkach. And I met him in Prague, was a big, I don't know if it was a hotel, what was it, but the concentration came, people come and meet each other. And then I met him there, and he, thought, he told me who he is. I said, Yes, your father is my, my father's cousin, they are cousins. And once he said, he goes to my Munkach, mm -hmm. where Mike was his family here. If I want to go because I need the papers, he said, yeah, come on, I'll take you. So he had a taxi, not a taxi, a car, like you know, a regular car like we have, not such a beautiful car. And he said, come, i take you. I said, all right. He went, he took me, and he dropped me off in my city, he left, and then he came to pick me up again. No, no, he didn't give, give me, pick, no, I can't remember, no, no, no. Okay. What happened? Uh, so yeah, when, he when, when, me up. Okay. When know. did you find out? About, when did you find out about your sister? When I came home, then a second time, from Prague, from my paper city was home. Yeah. I said, "Where is Miriam?" And she told me what happened with her. And she wouldn't pick up this apple. She would stay alive. She was tall like me, pretty, pretty. She was blonde, blue eyes. But the Germans don't like it. Was they want to have his people 
only blonde and blue eyes. But I she was blonde and blue eyes. Huh? I said, maybe I said to myself, maybe they kill her because she don't want the Jewish girls to have blue eyes and blonde hair. You see? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. She was very pretty too. And tall like me, and she was only 14 years old. And I was, I think, already about 17. Yeah. And then when the Russian was already very, very ready, we heard already the, that shooting out like fires, you know? I had the name, I said the name, but I can't Aircraft. Remember. Shooting at airplanes? No. This is some signal that they are very close. Oh, the already. Russians are close, okay. You know, it's very, because they were shooting out in piece of fires. Flares. Flares, flares, something, you know, something like they call it. But that was a very bunker, when it was alarm. The older Germans who hide themselves there. Oh. And we stayed in there and we was working, but thank God they don't do nothing. Maybe they know it as there is a concentration camp with Jewish girls, the Russian. And one was very close already, so we all ran in the bunker dot. And I was sitting not far, in front here, but here. I don't know why I was afraid to uh, to Gestapo, the black suits were there sitting in the front. I don't know why they were sitting there, they hiding them too, or whatever, but they don't touch us, nothing. They were sitting there till the morning, till morning they disappeared. And then we went out. And then the Russian salary was... At the camp? In the, yeah, in, the, in this place there. The Russian came in. Ah. But the Lager Fury was after me. And this day, Ilsa, but he was so, my two friends saw in her the, the suit. And so I was sitting, in, and I never forgot up on the top bank. I was sitting in the lower. My friend allowed me to sit there. Not to lay there, just sit. And she, she says, Ilsa, her name was Ilsa. She says to me, you are so beautiful, just to put you in a carriage and go for a walk. And I was smiling. I don't say that anything. And once uh, was there a, a master, a master, you know, a former, like, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, on one hand, he had like this, I don't know, from the war, or he's born like this. He wasn't the star there, later on he was. And I was, I worked in two machines, one here, one there, and I just, and here was a work, and I put in here the, mm -hmm. this, and it's running, and then I put turn to the other one, and he came to me, it was a lot of vacant machines, not far from me. He says to me, come on, go, and I, because Fridays, we were off, I think so, only one day, Saturday, I think so, we were off, only one day. I stopped my machine, Friday, about 20 minutes, it was a watch even, a big clocks. And I dusted, but my two machines were beautiful, clean. And here, an old lady, German lady, was just so much was between us separated, maybe so much. That to, and I have a bucket where I throw the empty, empty spoons, you know, from the yeah. bed. She bring me very often a sandwich. Well, only with margarine, was nothing in between. She threw it in for me there. I said, no, and she, we were not talking. And she didn't come in Fridays. So I went and I dusted her machine. Oh, I said nothing. I dusted her, uh, and then there's a foreman, a young man, came with a very bad SS woman. I can't remember her name. Every said very ugly, and she says for me, "You were fresh to the master." I speak very good German. I said no, I wasn't fresh. I just told him, I work on two machines. Let me pick a girl who was at box on one machine. Let she goes. I have work already on two. Mm -hmm. She said, pass my love. Pass my love, you know what you mean. Yeah. And it, be careful. Mm -hmm. And nothing. Then I, I had nothing with him, no more. But after the war, we were separated. I went, I don't know who was, I went in the bathroom. And there a man was standing there, not at all. And green uniform, but no, they're green, nothing, like he's a soldier, whatever. And he started to talk to me. 
but I don't ask for him. I just walked out. And after the war, I don't know where I met him, I can't remember. Because I was running around in empty houses, but the Dutchess, the Dutch, the Germans ran away for the front. Yeah. We saw them on the hill, like they go with wagons, with cars, people, with children. And yeah, but the, she didn't touch me. She said, pass my love. But I was very, very jealous, you know, for that for the enemy. But this was my fault. I'm young. Uh, British soldiers came in work in the factory too. Not that in the same fact, in the in Berlin, but the very, very, but I, some place else in this mm -hmm. uh, place. And one girl, she knew good English. And he always was to look at me, very handsome was. And she wrote her English, in English, her uh, letter for him. A few words. I don't know what was, but like, she was floating that where uh, the front is. We, we didn't get uh, liberated, but I couldn't, but it was a good letter. And once uh, one of the foreman came, that's something boxes we had to stay in a line. It's like one girl gave to other boxes, and they put it outside someplace, I can't remember. And then the leather, what I had, like I have here, I put it here inside, mm -hmm. you see? And it came out. And I started Hide to it. put it back, and he just saw the, the master there with that. He said, what did, took me out. Took me out, I said, what happened, what happened, why are you doing like this? I said, because my, my hands are freezing. I feel very cold. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe he just knew that they're losing the war, so maybe, but in other words, maybe he would see what I have put there. Right. So he didn't touch me, nothing, but I said, yes, I do it like this because I feel very cold. So let me go back to work. And I came back, I went right away in the bath, in the toilet, in the toilet pieces. And I goes, no more, no more letters. I don't know this in the yeah, and then I met him. I don't know how I met him after the, after the, you know, we were liberated. And he was walking after me. When I walk, was walking myself, I don't know why I was walking. Looking in empty houses, or, uh, you know, <coughs> the Germans ran away, we were up front. And I was looking for gold, couldn't find. One chain, was he on the, the picture there? But a long chain, what was, would I find? But I don't think so. I think it was a 10 carat gold. It wasn't like real gold. And I walk around. And this man, I don't know how I met him again. And he was walking with me. And then he went with me. And he took, he took me to some house. And the house had, the house was here. And here was a, uh, a barack like for wood and old stuff. He wanted to see if I am a spy for uh, for the Americans or for the Russians. And we, I walk in there, and there was Schmattes guy. I don't know what was that. And here in this corner, that German uh, old man Wehrmacht was hiding. And when, what was in our camp was uh, I recognized him, mm -hmm. but they were very nice. They were Wehrmacht and Padas. And I told him in the German, don't be afraid, I will not hurt you. And I walked out. It was stupid, so stupid. I shouldn't say this. Nothing, cook it and walk out. And then he took me up to the German woman, to the family dart. We went up in the house with him. And she says, for me to sit down, I will give you some food, something to eat. And I sit down, he sit down, and she gave me a very good potato goulash, a lot of meat in it, and I ate. I wasn't afraid that she can she can poison me. No, she, after the no. war already, no, I don't think so. No, I ate it was delicious, but I think so. After this, I know I I the solitary does. I'm not a spy, you know. I'm not with the mm -hmm. Russians or with the Americans. Look like. So. I don't see him no more. And I, I don't know why I was running around, and I wasn't afraid. The Monsi, my girlfriend. <clears throat> I met uh, 
a Russian air officer. He went, you know, with Monsi, and he comes to us and he says, come to the, where he is, at the station at Univera where he will give us some food. And I said for Monsi, I said, Monsi, come. There he sat and told me, where is that? We go, we get food, we don't have nothing. So I was c catching chickens in the street there. He brings them in the camp for the girls. Wow. And the girls cut them, and they brought primuses out from the kitchen, from where they were cooking food for us. And one German officer, uh, a Russian soldier, uh, officer came. He says, girls, where are you going? But we don't see people walk in the street. So we said, we're going with somebody, you know, the officer, the Russian officer, here, here, here he is. He said, he told us, told me to come, he will give us food. And then he says for us, don't go there. He needs a shiksa, not Yiddish girls. Don't go there. So we turn back and we don't go. Yeah. The rest of it, I know what problem the Russian make me problems. So I saw under you, just you have it under the tape. I'll have to take a look at the tape, okay. Yeah, you have the tape, the, the Russian twice. And a British, a Czech, uh, he was in the British army in Pilsen. I met him in the train to go home. And the same thing, I like to be free. I went, that's when the coupés was a here. Three people, four people sit here, and then the door closed, there was a window up to see out, and then with a long corridor, he was again, you know, and I was always just free, free, free look at the window. And a Russian soldier, a hunger shepherd, he wanted to put a wegschlepp mach. And I don't let myself, and I started to scream. He came, he came out and, and told him to leave, let me go. He don't want to. He just was pulling me. He took out the pistol. The British, it's a Jewish soldier was one in the British army for him person. And when he took out the pistol on him, then he let me go. And they closed the door from the Arctic Cooper. And here he brought the NKVD, he brought, you know, the NKVD, the police from the Russians. He says, for does he took the post, the pistol on him, the, 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 the English mm -hmm. British uh, soldier. Officer. Officer was a whatever. And then he asked the people that, the fellow Czech people, you know, is this true? The Czech people said, no, it's not true. So then he left. Oh, and then we came to another station. I don't know what station was it, I can't remember. Coming home, four Russian soldiers was in the, the coupe. And was sitting one, and I was so naive. But I understand what they're talking, and they're talking to me, and I talk to them. He says, if you want to take some soda, or whatever, come. He said, we go down. He said, what's well, so you could buy? It must be a so sandwich, who knows? And I'm so naive, and I go with him. I go down, and we came to this house, a long house. was in the table, took the entries. He helped me by my shoulder and push me in behind the backyard. There was no houses there, nothing. And he just want to rape me, tearing for me the clothes. And I was screaming and crying. It didn't help nothing, but and I saw a man was passing in the sidewalk from outside, but he didn't, for, he didn't come for help for me. He was scared, looks like. What happened was saved me. I got my period. Girls had no period. I don't got period too, but four or five months. Then I got it back. She didn't got it long time. When she come home, she got, got her period. So I don't told her, told him that I am sick. I am sick. And he understood I'm sick, something from the Germans. So he let me go. We went back in the, the train, state, train, remember it is. Then he says for me, Russian, when you come home, go to a doctor. Go to a doctor and heal yourself. I said, yes, I will go, I will go. But if I wouldn't say that I had a period, I don't know what happened. I was screaming and I was fighting with him and nobody came to hold, help me. Naive, very naive. I was very naive. And nobody was running around 
No, I was running around. I was something I don't know. We were the 350 girls. And I was running around and bringing food in the camp around. And the, the pig chickens and bread I brought and everything. That's crazy. Crazy. I was crazy, Jola. Got crazy.